Hey guys, Bill coming back at you again with another video. Today we got a few different things to do. We're going to check out the seedlings that we dropped last week. We'll check out the autoflower clones, see how they're making out. We'll find out the winner of the Guess the Weight on the autoflower sea of green. And I got a little tip for you on how to get rid of those nasty fungus gnats. Okay guys, so... Uh, anybody that's been growing for a while, myself included, has had problems with fungus gnats. They're little tiny flying insects that breed in the soil, and they're just a pain in the butt. The larva will chew on those nice little roots, and uh, it can do some damage to the plants. And the adults are just damn annoying. So how did I get rid of my fungus gnats? Let's check it out. Okay, guys, there it is. Mosquito dunks. Now, you can also get mosquito bits, too. But I couldn't find them around here, so I went with the mosquito dunks. Now, these contain a bacteria, a bacteria that's non-harmful to you and your pets and your plants and other insects. It's really only harmful to small flying insects and only during the larva stage. So a lot of people use these out in uh, water collection barrels. Any stale water that you have outside, you just chuck one of these in and um, it will kill off the mosquito larva and stuff like that. So how do we use it inside? Well, I'll show you how I use it. What I do is I take one, you know, I only got one left in this package, but I have more. So this is a dunk here. Now what I do is I do all my watering with my, my trusty two gallon water jug here with a hose on it. Uh, if you're just, if you're using one of these and you don't have a hose on it, Try to find a piece of hose that'll fit. Tape it on with some Gorilla Tape or something. I'm telling you that makes all the difference because you can get in there underneath the plants and uh, it just makes things so much easier. Anyway, back to the dunks. So what I do with these is I just drop it right in the watering container. Now I already have one in there, so I don't need to add this one now. But uh, now that's all I do. The one I have in here has been in here for about a week. So how do I utilize it? I just water my plants. Uh, it's as simple as that. When I'm done watering for the day, I just have to make sure that I keep this full. So I'll fill it and I'll put it away for the next day with the mosquito dunk in it. Now that will break down overnight and it'll release some bacteria. Now this bacteria, again, is harm, it's harmless to, to most living organisms, but this bacteria attacks larva. So basically the next day i go to water now i know that at this point this is full of water with the bacteria in it so i give it a mix if i've got numerous plants i'll go and i'll try to get a little bit on each plant if not i'll make sure that the first feeding the next day starts with one of the feedings that didn't get it uh that way they, they're all getting it and it's as simple as that and then once this once this container of this water is done i'll just continue to use it and add my nutrients and continue watering with it and at the end, I'll fill it again and let it sit overnight and give that uh, mosquito dunk time to break down. Now, that's it. I've tried many things. I've tried uh, nematodes. I've tried predator mite. I've tried uh, diatomaceous earth sprays and everything worked to a point. But this here has actually gotten rid of them all. So I'm uh, really happy with this. And it's super easy. So you can check these out. Um, I don't have a link for them or anything, but just uh, put mosquito dunks into your browser and uh, you can find them on Amazon or your local garden store might have them as well. So anyway, I just wanted to pass that on to you because this has been a godsend. Okay, so let's check out the seedlings that we dropped last week. And here we have it. Now we had two that didn't quite make it. And I noticed when I planted them, there was two that they were cracked open and the tail was out just a little bit. And that was it. And the rest wrote quite a bit more. So I knew they were kind of stunted to begin with. But uh, we did end up with three star killers, which were donated to me by uh, my friend Alex. I couldn't remember who it was there last week. But uh, thanks, Alex, for the star killer photo periods. Uh, we have two Sunset Sherbert and two Super Lemon Haze. These are, these are both from ilovegrowingmarijuana.com. I can't put a link to it in the description because YouTube doesn't like that. But if you go to my Instagram, you can find the uh, the web address on there if you're interested. So, yeah, they're doing really good. They've been out for, I'm going to call it five days. 
even though there was a couple of them that uh, they had actually shed their shell in the paper towel. So they were planted somewhat right on the surface, but it still took a couple of days for the root to kind of get down there and they started to actually grow up away from the surface. So I'm calling it, I'm calling them five days right now. So uh, we're gonna keep an eye on them. Next week, they'll be big enough to go into their, uh, into their final pots, into uh, five gallon pots. But uh, for now, we're just going to leave them here and let them do their thing. I've been watering them every couple of days. Uh, just give them some water. And each one of these cups is very important to have drainage holes in the bottom. So I just poke some holes in it with a knife. And uh, I just water them until it comes out the bottom. And that's it. That's usually pretty good for a couple of days. So we're just leaving them there. Uh, they're under the Mars Hydro TS-1000. Uh, the first Mars Hydro light I ever grew with. Love it. Still use it quite often. Uh, so we're just going to leave them there until next week. Now let's pop over and check out the Autoflower clones. So there we are. We have two here, kind of. We have this one in the back. This was an Autoflower that we took from the Sea of Green Autoflowers, which were harvested a couple of weeks ago. So how is it that the Autoflower parents are finished and harvested, and this one's still going? being an autoflower. Well, I left this in the cloner for an extra month, which kind of put a pause on the veg stage. And then when we took it out, it stayed in veg for a week or more and then flipped to flower. So basically by putting it in that cloner, in that enclosed spot, it seemed to freeze time a little bit. Now, I'm not saying that will work every time. Uh, this is just an experiment, but that's what happened with this one. And she's doing great. She's got a little bit of lockout going on because I haven't been getting as much runoff as I should be. But she's got some decent buds on her. Uh, we got, they're nice and frosty. And she's got three weeks left to fill out. So uh, not bad for an autoflower clone. Considering she's probably going to produce more than her parents, which are already gone. I think she's doing fantastic. So is it worth cloning an autoflower? Uh, I guess that's what this experiment was all about. And uh, I would say... Give it a try. See how it works for you. I mean, it worked great for me. The last one, the last one that we harvested last week, that was a great one. Uh, that was nice and big and heavy. I haven't got a weight on it yet, but uh, that did really well. And this one's going to produce a decent amount too. So uh, I definitely say it's worth it, but um, give it a try and see what you think. Now this one down here, this... This was pushing the line even more. So this is a clone from this one. And so it's second generation clone. The thing with this one is it had already, it was already throwing hairs by the time I took the clone. So it's stayed into flower and you can see it's got some little buds there and uh, it's not gonna produce much at all. So, so as long as I have room, I'll just leave it there and let it do its thing. Uh, once it gets in the way, I'll probably just chuck it in the compost because it's not going to produce much of anything. Now, I do want to try this again at some point. Uh, won't be won't be today, but uh, I do want to do the autoflower clone thing again just to see if this was just like a fluke or something. And I also want to try doing the second generation clones, but timing it out a little bit better and trying to get them while they're still in uh, in the veg stage. But uh, it's definitely been a really awesome experiment for sure. Now let's go to the thing we've all been waiting for. The Alien vs. Triangle crossed with Three Bears OG Sea of Green. We harvested the last of it a couple of weeks ago, so it's all dried. Got it trimmed up, mostly using a trim bowl, uh, which saves a lot of time. It does take off a little bit more material than you probably would if you were hand trimming. But that's fine with me. I have plenty so I don't mind losing a little bit that way uh, it really saves a ton of time let's uh let's open up one of these and take a look and see how how it looks now obviously you can see I'm in the grove bags uh, www.grovebags.com and uh, these are made for just this purpose for curing your bud and they work great they they work great at uh, locking in them terpenes and keeping the moisture at a consistent level and man as soon as i opened that i couldn't smell it at all until i opened that now the room is full of uh of the terpenes but uh anyway let's check let's check this out again i was used i used the uh bowl trimmer 
okay let's see here so there we go pretty decent job and uh nice frosty bud and pretty dense too these are really quite dense buds now i like to do i like to do the bowl trimming when it's dry and uh sometimes i let it go just a little bit too far dry because it tends to work a little bit better in the bowl trimmer because it basically works like a trim bag where even though you got a little moisture left in the buds the little leaves and stuff are pretty crispy and uh, basically when you turn it it kind of just snaps all them off and it works really good but it does take off a little bit more than normal and if your bud is fluffy at all it'll chew it right up so uh, great for dense buds not so good for uh for small fluffy buds and it does tend to leave um, like some of the crow's feet there on the bottom but uh, it's super easy to take a pair of scissors and snip them off if you want so anyway I have uh, four bags here all in different amounts so when we harvested uh, we started the guess the weight contest guess the dry weight so this is uh, this is what we got and let's see what the weights are. We have 248 grams in one bag, 292 grams in another, 231 in another, and 204 in the last one. So that gives us 975 grams, which is 34.82 ounce, 2.17 pounds. So I actually didn't get as much as I thought I was going to because some of the plants were pretty heavy. Now we did have the, the biggest one there I said I would weigh on its own just to see how much it that one had in it and that one by itself was 161 grams uh that's all added in here but uh, that was that was the best producer by far so if we could get them again and just get that phenotype there you go that'd be perfect but uh growing from seed it's it's a bit harder because you have the different phenotypes so who got closest to 975 grams we have u4ea grow I'm thinking that sounds out euphoria grow, but I'm not sure. But anyway, congratulations. And their comment was, I'm going to guess 972 grams on the sea of green. Well, you were th only three grams off, but you were the closest without going over. So congratulations. I will be shipping you off this week. One of my Bill Ward happy growing hats. And you might want to check the hat too under the lip or something. There may be something else in there. But uh, congratulations. And the same with all my giveaways. I will contact you through that comment itself. And I'll give you my email. And we'll figure out the shipping and all that. So congratulations again. And thanks for everybody that participated. Okay guys. That's it for this week. Uh, come back next week. We'll be transplanting those little seedlings into their five-gallon pots. And I'm also going to show you my uh, my Lady Susan. I've had a lot of people. I've, I've had tons of people ask if I'm going to do a video on how to build one. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I don't have the materials for that right now. But I am going to uh, show you this one a little bit closer, like underneath, and how it works and how you can make your own. So, uh tune in next week for that okay guys thanks for watching like share subscribe leave a comment down below and we'll see you on the next one happy growing